of all the planets in the solar system, Saturn has the largest collection of moons, kind of in line with Jupiter as well. They're both large planets. They also have a large collection of moons. Now, Saturn has moons that have its own atmosphere, like Titan, has very small moons in its actual rings itself, and then it has moons in between, which are its mid sized moons, which are the ones we're interested in for this video and how they actually are formed from the rings themselves. So, let's go to the actual rings and what they're actually comprised of. So, they're predominantly water ice, and you can think of it as more of a collection of small individual moons all orbiting the same direction and they're quite thin actually so there's not a very deep layer of these particular small moons as you like to think so these are approximately meter size and below so quite small particles and they're all orbiting in a common direction so think of it like this they're all moons quite close to each other that are all orbiting in the same direction they're orbiting quite fast so you're talking tens of kilometers per second so think of it as traffic on the, on a road that's all going in the same direction. The cars are all going the same direction. So their relative movement to one another is not that great, even though they're going around quite fast. Now, there's something important about Saturn's rings and the edge of it. So the edge of the rings is around about the Roche limit for water ice. Now, the Roche limit is a distance that, let's say, a, a smaller object can get to a larger object, in this case, a moon to the planet, where it can no longer gravitationally hold itself together before the tides from the planet pull it apart. So the edge of the ring system sits at this Roche limit. If anything goes inside of that, then it can't hold itself together from its own self-gravity, so it gets tidally pulled apart. Now, the same thing happens in the other direction. If material was to go outside of the Roche limit, then that can then form into moons because the gravitational tides or force from that larger planet weakens enough that it can actually clump together under its own gravity. So anything going beyond that Roche limit, you could form a moon. Anything that goes the other way and getting closer to the planet is going to get tidally pulled apart and destroyed, which is quite important for Saturn's rings because it sits at that limit. So here, right at the edge, it's pretty much at the Roche limit for water ice, and anything inside that, it's the, the tides are too strong to grow moons. So it kind of makes sense that you've got this ring system there. You haven't got moons, or technically there are some moons already in there, but they're not necessarily made of water ice. So the Roche limit changes depending on what the material is. So for a rocky material, actually, it would be slightly different. It would be much closer to the planet. So for water ice, that's pretty much where it is. And if we go back to the particles moving, so we know that they're kind of orbiting around in the same direction relatively fast, but they are somewhat close or densely packed to the point where they will collide with each other. So as they're going around, they do slightly bump into each other and they have collisions. Now, when they collide with each other, they give themselves some radial movement. So some of their movement then changes slightly so they can move towards the planet and slightly out of the planet. Only slightly, but it's enough to kind of cause a spreading of the ring. So over time, get a spreading of that ring. Now, if you've got that Roche limit, so that is that limit where moons could form if anything went beyond that, these collisions between the particles and that radial movement and the viscous spreading it goes beyond that. So at that point, you can start to have moons forming. And it's known as like a viscous spreading, so like a viscous fluid, really. It would spread outwards due to this kind of interaction between the individual particles. And again, this is important for the mid-sized moons because we believe they formed from the rings. So once that happens, those tides are much weaker. They're at a point where those ring particles can come together under their own gravitational attraction. And in time, they grow into a moon. So you get a moon forming just on the ring edge, just outside of the Roche limit. Now, when that happens, you've then got a moon just outside of the ring system quite close the gravitational force or interaction of that moon on back onto the ring system itself will cause a spiral density wave and this will go all the way around the actual ring system that's just a snapshot of a local piece there but you can see those lines those white lines and they get closer and closer to each other 
and that is a spiral density wave around the ring system and it's called a density wave because it's slightly denser than the, than the rest of the ring system and it causes a spiral structure and it's the moon that causes that on the ring due to the gravitational perturbations that it's causing now the important thing here is that those spiral density waves don't orbit at the same velocity as the ring itself they, they orbit at a slightly different velocity that changes their angular momentum and in turn will basically push on the moon itself so the moon is causing a structure in the ring system which is orbiting slightly different to the ring itself, that then exerts a force back on the moon. In order to conserve energy, that moon drifts outwards. So the ring is actually exerting a, a torque, well not the ring, but the waves are exerting a torque on the moon. It causes that outward migration in its orbit. So this moon then starts to drift away from the ring edge. Now then what happens then, is that ring is still spreading beyond the Roche limit. So you then get an, another moon forming just outside of the ring again. So this other one, the first one is still drifting away because it's actually causing these spiral waves on the ring, which obviously get weaker the further away it gets. And then this new one starts to form, and then the process starts again. That new one would cause a feature or these structures in the ring. That would then start to drift away as well. And what happens is each time a moon forms, the ring is less massive. So some of that mass has been turned into a moon. So the ring actually shrinks. And because of that, each new moon is slightly smaller than the one before it. So when you have a look at the actual architecture or the configuration of these mid-sized moons, the further away they are, they are more massive, they're bigger. And they get smaller the closer you get to Saturn's rings. And this is because they formed at the ring edge and then moved away as the ring has got smaller each time. So there's less material there to make a new one. So thank you for watching. And if you enjoy, then check out some of the other videos.